So about all this stuff about not being bothered by interruptions, right? That brings us to Mark's gospel. Mark this morning has two stories that play off of each other, kind of to build up the, the uh, attention and excitement about both. That first story is about a seriously ill, almost to the point of death, little girl, 12 years old, likely just starting her menstrual cycle, about ready to be married off as a little young woman. The second is an older woman with a menstrual cycle that just won't quit hemorrhaging. The first person is her daddy's little princess, he being rich and respectable and very religious. The second person is her family's pariah. The first is an insider embraced warmly by the Jewish faith. The second person is an outcast, coldly cut off, unclean, untouchable, poor, unrespected, a believer in magic. What they have in common is that they both are in need of healing. For now, Mark says, that little girl's need is going to have to wait. She gets shortchanged because Jesus is interrupted by that other woman's touch. This bankrupted, bloody mess of a woman has the audacity to come up in the crowd behind Jesus as he walks along with his followers, believing as she did that by simply touching, simply touching or being touched by a holy man, she could be healed, safe from her distress. So with this magical thinking, she reaches out to Jesus, touches him, and then she hopes simply to disappear back into the crowd. Right? But Mark says, Jesus knows. He feels that, how do they say it, that slight interruption in the force. And he turns to reach out to whomever it was that touched him. When Jesus loudly says, who touched me? <laughs> it sounds like the disciples laugh. And they say, come on, Jesus. In a crowd like this, who didn't touch you, right? But Mark says, Jesus knows. When he asks again, this woman, just like Jairus had done, this woman falls in worship at Jesus' feet, and she says, it's me. I did it. Sounds like Eve in the Garden of Eden. She tells the whole truth, believing that it was her touch of Jesus that had healed her. But Jesus says, daughter, <laughs> He calls her daughter. And simply by that term alone, he restores her to family, to community, and to new life. And then Jesus says, it, it wasn't the touch that healed you, daughter. It was your faith. Her desperate, desperate faith and trust in God and in him that made her whole. Now, in the midst of this interruption, Mark says, Jesus is interrupted again by folks who come from Jairus' house. This time, these friends of Jairus say, it's too late. Jesus, you've wasted too much time on that outcast woman, and now the important little girl is dead. You needn't bother even coming to the house. But the story says, Jesus is going to bother. He tells her dad not to fear, to let his faith overcome that fear. Trust, Jesus says, trust me. Story moves along the road. Family, friends, and professional mourners are weeping and wailing when Jesus arrives. When Jesus tells them that the little girl is not dead but sleeping, Sort of like Lazarus would be sleeping, right? They laugh. They know what they saw. They know better. This delay of Jesus brought death. This interruption brought heartache. Yet the story says 
Jesus goes and he reaches out to that little girl, takes her by the hand, simply says, get up. Mark says it seems Jesus knows best of all, right? And the little girl does. She gets up, she stands, she walks. And then Jesus says to her family, now, give her a bite to eat. Because as everybody knows, everybody knows, ghosts and spirits don't eat food. So she must be alive, truly. It's faith again. Here, the faith of her father that overcomes fear once more, right? So this morning, two stories, two daughters, both loved by God, both given back to family and community. They've been healed. They've been saved. The word is sozo because it's never a bother to bring the dead and dying back to new life, right? So this Wednesday, as we're looking at this in text study, I asked the group, for me, the question is, so where do such healing story as, stories as these, where do they leave us, you and me? You know, ever since the time of Jesus, healing stories like these have been part of the Christian witness, part of our tradition. And yet, in our day, Acts like these are mostly associated with religious quacks and charlatans, right? Who are in it for the fame or the money or, or the power over some congregation. Was it P.T. Barnum who said there's a sucker born every minute, right? Well, I'm going to do an aside here. I grew up with a mother who loved to watch Oral Roberts on uh, Sunday TV. Remember him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A famous healer, or maybe better, an infamous healer, right? Every Sunday he would sit on stage in front of cameras and he'd shout out to folks in his audience whom he just knew needed his healing touch. Somebody here has hemorrhoids. Somebody here has a heartache, right? All kinds of stuff. Then he'd invite them up on stage and he'd ask them what their need was, what their illness was. And if you remember... As they're standing there, he would smack them in the forehead like this, shouting, heal, heal, and knock them to the floor. And there'd be shouts of, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, right? Only they weren't really actual healings. Most were staged for the curious and the eager and for their donations, right? Now in Canada, when I was there, it wasn't Oral Roberts that uh, got all the attention. Their TV healer was Ernest Angley. <laughs> I love that little guy. He loved his own name, right? Because after all, his heart was so earnest and his uh, work was so angely. Well, of course, right? But back again to that question. Where does all this healing story stuff leave us? The gospel story said that Jesus healed the blind, made them see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the sick healed, the dead raised to life. He healed them, he saved them. Again, the word is sozo, it means both physician and savior, right? That's our Jesus, willing to be interrupted, never bothered when we cry out our needs? Where does this leave us? I was reading an author I like again, Frederick Buechner. I mention him from time to time. He's got an article on healing. He gives us some options as to what we might do in response to all these stories. Jesus, healer of every ill we sing, right? Or we're thinking maybe we're born too late. For God to love us in this way, right? So Beekner does this. His first option says, well, if the mere idea of healing miracles offends the reason and dignity of you, they must not really happen. Or unless there is objective medical evidence to substantiate what happened, it didn't happen. Or, a little closer to home, if otherwise smart and honest people are convinced of such healings, 
despite all the arguments made to the contrary, well then that sickness must have been just psychosomatic. Or number four, he says, you can simply give it a try anyway. You can just pray for healing, trust, believe, see what may happen, go to the doctor, of course, but you can even lay hands on someone, someone that you want healed, just like Jesus did. And God, he says, might use your poor hands and your poor faith as a means of his healing, saving work. He says, give prayers for healing a try. Trying as you can to trust that Jesus can be bothered by your prayers, right? Now he says, well, if God doesn't give you what you're asking for, maybe God's giving you something else. So pay attention. He says, now, if all of this makes you feel like a fool for asking for such a thing, keep asking. He says, you are a fool, <laughs> but for a change, you're not a damn fool. <laughs> so, believe healing is possible, one way or the other, or not. Trust God, or not, but then wait and see. I think, I think the best we can do in this matter is to remember this promise from Scripture. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. The Lord is our portion, cries our soul. Therefore we will, we will hope in him. Still, even when it seems so hopeless and is not a laughing matter to anyone. Amen. Amen. May that peace that healing peace of Jesus Christ. Keep your hearts and minds in him uh, now and forever. Amen. As you're able, please stand as we sing our hymn of the day. <laughs>